One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Joe Land, Mike Henning here, coming to you today with the old traditional tune, I Know You Rider. We're going to be in the key of D without retuning the banjo. So this song is probably most popular by the Grateful Dead. Shout out to all my fellow deadheads out there. And I had a request to do this one, and I kind of worked up a solo and maybe an advanced beginner, beginner intermediate. I would maybe give this one about a four, four out of ten difficulty. I think you can get this one with some practice. But I wanted to work up a solo that stuck pretty close to the melody, and I wanted to do just one time through keep it a little bit shorter for the solo, so then for the backup section, we can really dive into how to play these chords all over the neck. Grateful Dead music is known for jamming, right? So you're gonna have a lot of time to play some backup, so I wanted to make sure you had plenty of spots all over the neck to play these chords, so you could practice jamming with all your friends. All right, here's I Know You Rider in the key of D. All right, so let's start breaking down this solo for I Know You Rider. So we're just in standard G tuning, so that's important. A lot of banjo players think you have to retune the banjo to play in D, but you really don't have to. So this might be a really good lesson for you if you're not used to playing in the key of D. I always like to just play in standard tuning whenever I can. Sometimes I'll use a capo or retune, but again, if I can stay in standard tuning, I like to do that whenever possible. All right, so let's play the first nine measures. That'll be like the opening melody line, and then we'll break it down measure by measure. Here we go. Do that a few times. Okay, so before we break down the solo, let's just look at the basic positions we're going to use. So we're going to use a one finger D chord essentially, uh, index finger on the second fret of the third string. And then occasionally we're going to reach our ring finger to this fourth fret, which basically is the low two fingers of your full D chord. But notice how one thing we're doing is we're leaving off the top two fingers to just make it easier to play. And then I'm even going to leave my ring finger off to, to keep it even easier, right? So I'm just playing a really one easy one finger D chord. And then I'm going to go into a classic C and then kind of G open. And then back to D. So that's kind of the positions you want to practice. And you can play the full chords if you want to, right? But used to get used to coming back to this position right here where I've got my index finger on the second fret of the third string, okay? So with our pickup, we're gonna go on beat two, we're gonna play the open D string, and then the fourth fret, and then open third string, and then that second fret on the third string. So we're just walking up to that note that we wanna play. Probably technically doesn't actually line up with the words. The I know you rider kind of starts in measure two, but it's just nice to have a little pickup into that melody. That's kind of what we're doing there. I'm using my thumb on my right hand four times in a row to not rush through that. So we're going one, two, three, four, one, okay. And then I stay there and I do two forward rolls, T-I-M, thumb, index, middle. I'm going to do four, three, one, four, three, one. So I have one, two, and three, and four, and. So a couple of 
couple little D tips is one, don't push down too hard on that second fret. It's easy to put yourself a little out of tune and you don't want to be back too far away from the fret, right? Get, get nice and close, but don't push down too hard. Kind of keep it soft. And just looping measure two, that'd be like a nice little backup or lead lick. one and two together. We have one, one. So that's kind of like the I know and then we're going to play, I'll show you an easy way to do it first and then a little harder way in measure three. So the easier way is just play the fourth fret on its own and then open. So we're kind of walking up those notes. So you can kind of hear that I know you rider part. So that's what we're doing there. So we're going. So that's the kind of the easier way is just play the fourth fret on its own. If you want a more intermediate or advanced beginner way, add a little hammer on or slide. So I'm going to do a hammer on in this case. So I'm actually going to put my second finger down on the third fret of the four string and then quick hammer on. So you have. on real quick there, but keep your middle finger down. Just adds a little bit of attitude. Or you can do it with a slide. So you have. Or like I said, you can play with just the fourth fret on its own if you want to make it a little bit easier. You can hear it. It doesn't sound that much different, but again, with the, the hammer on, it just it mimics a vocal quality where you're kind of bending into that note. And then right here, we're going to quick shift. So we're going to let our middle finger take over on that one finger D chord on the second fret of the third string. And we're going to play four, three, one, four. Okay. So you hammer on, hit this open string and then move your hand. And the reason we're doing that is because we need to go to the C chord right here. If we use our index finger, you can, you can do it, but then you've got a quick flip, right? So again, we're looking ahead. Now my index finger and third finger are hovering right over that C chord ready to go. So again, it's a small thing, but it's going to make a difference when you play it faster. So let's do two and three together. We have shift, do it a little faster without talking. strings to shift, right? That's good practice. And then we have the miss me when I'm gone. That's the C and the G. So we, we roll through that D chord. Now put your first finger down on the first fret, second string and play that note with the index finger of your right hand, index finger of your left hand too, actually. And then you put your rest of your C down. And you actually don't have to put down the low string if you don't want to, but I do. And then do five, two, one, five, two, one. So two, four rolls. So you have one, two, and three, and four, and same timing as measure two. We're not doing a double thumb though, so make sure you don't rush through it. I'm doing index finger, and then, so it's a quarter note, one, two, and three, and four, to rush through that so don't rush through that and then right here we're going to go to a G so you take your your second finger and you move it to the second fret of the third string and we're going to do a two four slide with an alternating thumb roll so thumb index thumb middle so I do string three two five one three two five one and then a three two pull off and I'm doing three two three one so two alternating thumb rolls in a row just on different strings. So I'm going. And then we're going to land back in that one finger D chord on that second fret to hear how it resolves. So that's the miss me when I'm gone part. So you have. So when 
I'm sliding that up, get your index finger down on the second fret, have that one down, and then I do a pull off, kind of pulling back toward my palm. And then land here. So the basic melody is, So we're going. And then this is the same as measure two. Okay, so I would I encourage you if you know the song, sing the lyrics in your head. I know you ride are gonna miss me when I'm gone. That'll naturally help you kind of accent the melody. So you have Basically, measures six through eight is just fill. There's a long kind of pause in the vocals. So what we're going to do is we just do some fill on a D chord, a one finger D, super easy. We're going to go measure six, and then measure seven, just a little rhythmic lick, open four string twice, and then kind of like a backwards roll. So you have just looping measure seven. And then measure eight, just a four diverse roll on a one finger D chord, just not using the fifth string. That's a good example of, of playing a roll that you know maybe in G, something like this. But now we're converting it to D, so we're avoiding that fifth string and we're just substituting the fourth string. Same exact right hand pattern, just different set of strings, okay? And then measure nine is our, essentially our pickup, just a more advanced pickup. We're gonna go. So instead of just walking up, which you could do, but we're basically gonna be right here in this one finger D coming out of measure eight. And then you do an alternating thumb roll, four, three, and then put your ring finger down on the fourth fret, do four, one, those are the strings. And then quick slide down and slide back up and then open and then here. So you have, it's just a variation on measure one. Instead of going, now we're going. Okay, so that's the opening melody line. And then we're actually gonna repeat that melody line. So let's play measures one through nine a few times so we got it. One. Thank you. 